Yes, he is. Hey, good morning, Bayside. Welcome this morning. Good to see you this morning. A little lull between the storms we got going on here, so thanks for coming out. Those of you who are at home, nice and snug and warm in your living rooms or wherever you're at, thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, we are looking forward to a great morning of worship. As Pastor Jason makes his way up here this morning, we want to see his smiling presence up here as well. And uh, okay, you got a genius for missing your cue, bro. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, there we go. I was out still welcoming people. <laughs> That's Sorry. a good thing. Thanks for being here. Hey, we've got a couple things we just want to let you know about. Um, we are having services in person at 9 o'clock. And so if you're wanting to come back, we are wearing masks um, as we come in and leaving. Um, we're socially distanced, but we'd love to have you um, come back and join us if you're willing and able. Um, we're going to continue our online services. Also, we have kids ministry starting Woo! next week. Yeah, all right. And so we will have all the pra uh, practices and all the sanitation going on. We bought a fogging machine for the rooms that's safe. And so uh, we're going to be doing that starting next week. And what else do we got coming up? I thought up we here? already had a fogging machine. We <laughs> Some <laughs> oh, of you love that fogging machine. This one's one, right? That's right. All right. Hey, something we've been looking forward to for a long time, and now that the stay-at-home order has been lifted, we are looking forward to starting up small groups again. This hey. is going to be a little different format, okay? So kind of listen up a little bit because this is the way it's going to work. It's going to be in person here around round tables if you want to. We'll have several round tables set up, and we'll have group discussion going on. It's all going to revolve around Pastor Rosendo's series on Colossians. So we're looking forward to that. There's going to be a little DVD that goes with the small groups. If you are not comfortable with being here in a small group setting, we are also going to Zoom it. So you'll be able to log in on Zoom, still be part of our small group uh, awesome. protocol session, whatever you want to call it. And if you would like to start up a small group in your homes to do that, to, to join in on Zoom as a small group in your home, let us know. We would love to do that with you and partner with you on that. Also, if you want to just be part of it as an individual in your home, you will still be able to join in on Zoom. So we're going to tap into some of this technology and get our small groups going again. And uh, we are really excited about that. I'm going to get some help from the technical aspect of it because that ain't me. <laughs> I can facilitate a group, but I can't film it. So we'll figure all that out and get it going. So look forward to having you join us. That's awesome. We look forward to just our connection, um, being able to just share with one another again. And then also we just want to mention we're having a congregational meeting um, on February 14th. And yes, that's Valentine's Day, but it's at 1030 a.m. So it's going to be following our morning service. Uh, we'll be having that here. We're going to make it available online as well, a Zoom or a Facebook Live or something, so you can interact with that as well if you're at home. And so we'd love to have you join us uh, for our annual congregational meeting. What better way to celebrate with your significant other than to join our annual meeting? Absolutely. Get you can hold hands. Off. We'll even let you hold hands in church. How about that? <laughs> well, guys, let's go ahead and join in a worship. Um, we are excited that you're here today. So would you stand up if you're here in the room or at home? And let's worship together. Amen.
speak life into our hearts. You speak life into our hearts. Sing this next part together. From the mother's womb. From the mother's womb, you have chosen me. Your love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family. Oh, your love flows through that's right, church. Just bring up the energy. Because I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. That's right. Let's sing it louder. Because I'm no longer a slave to fear. Yeah. Oh, I am a child of God. Let's hear every voice sing. Because I'm no longer.
Heavenly Father, we lay down our fears and our anxieties this morning. We choose this morning not to be slaves, God. We choose not to be slaves to the negativity that we are told by our neighbors. We choose not to be slaves to what we know to be wrong. God, we choose to be truthful to you and to, stole, and to stand firm in that belief, God. To stand firm in the lion. We are with you as you are with us this morning. And Heavenly Father, as we transition into service, I pray that you instill that confidence in us this morning, God. You are with us. You are here. As you've never left. Heavenly Father, we say all this in your precious name, the name of Jesus, and all God's people said, amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone joining us online. We're so glad that you can join us once again. We are here together, whether you are joining us online or whether you've been able to join us in person, we're one church together, amen? Two different venues, that's all. Uh, kids, go ahead and get your, uh, get your activities right now and read through it, learn something. For those of you at home, if you have your kids at home, you can log on to theparentq.org, and that's our weekly lessons that we follow and interact with here at our kids' ministry. All right, well, this morning we are concluding, we are concluding our message series that's called Living Forward. And this Living Forward message series has been about starting the new year in such a way that we could look at where we are in our relationship with Jesus and look at where we are in faith at all. Some of us hearing this might be thinking, you know, I'm still learning and I'm still waiting to make a decision or, or not maybe uh, about who Jesus is. And, and this series has been designed so that we could look at where we are in response to what God has already done for us. And so that we can take what we've been learning through this series and then actually make some goals for our lives. And hopefully you've already done that for 2021. But the, 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 the re initially, I'll say this, initially I thought this series was going to be about how to make goals that are centered on Jesus. And, the, and it is that. But before I could even even start talking about goals and how to make goals and how to just really go for it for 2021. I believe God's been speaking to me more about how to center on him and, and build a foundation on him and interact with him and then make goals so that everything that comes ahead of us in 2021, we know with, a, with absolute certainty that it is being done and experienced in relationship with Jesus in relationship with God Almighty, that God is ahead of us, beside us, and he's taking care of whatever is behind us. We need to look at 2021 ahead of us with hope, but we can't manufacture that hope by ourselves. That's just psyching ourselves up like we're just about to go out and, and play a game. No, this hope comes from the Holy Spirit of God himself that's being poured into us as we make decisions to respond to what's in front of us in relationship with Jesus. And through that 
come many different outcomes. Through that, makes we, we, we start to look at the world in a way that we understand that what's happening around us and even in us is all under God's control and his sovereignty, and we can make a decision that we're going to be part of God's plan and, and not be so disturbed at man's plan. Amen? So with that, let's dive into our last message of this series. And to give you a quick review, we went over repenting, replacing, refreshing, and or reviving, whichever word suits you best. And this week, this, this morning, we're going to be talking about resisting and persevering, or re, re, sticking with our word, repeating, meaning no matter how many times we might fall down, we keep on repeating the cycle of turning back to God, making changes for him, committing to him, following Jesus, and resisting the devil's work. What that also looks like following that is letting go, doing something different, committing to Jesus, fighting a spiritual battle in our lives, and persevering and enduring. What that will do is break down the idols in our lives, deal with the fear in our life, reorient us from self-centered goals and ambitions to living for God, address and even get rid of our hang-ups and our habits that are self-deceiving and discouraging, and actually transform our lives from one that might be marked with defeat to one marked with victory. When we surrender to God, trust in Jesus, live for Jesus, remain in Christ, and in fact, live with hope and God's outpouring of love. Who wouldn't want that? But the reality is this. This is true about me, and I believe it's true about many of us. Year after year after year, we say we want something different, and year after year after year, it's a lot of the same. Year after year, we say we're so glad that the previous year is over. And then we walk into another year where at the end of it, we say we're so glad that is over. But this is the year. This is the year God is calling us to his heart. Jesus is calling us right now to his heart. And we could say yes. He's calling us to his heart so that we could look at 2021 with great expectation, filled with hope, so that at the end of 2021, regardless of what is happening in politics, in our neighborhood, regardless of what is happening around us, at the end of 2021, we're going to say, praise God. That was an incredible year of him doing his work through me. He's changed me in many ways. He's used me in many ways, and he is still God enthroned. Wouldn't that be a great year to live through? That doesn't mean <laughs> there won't be hardship. In fact, there will be. Uh, okay, I'm killing it over here with my boy. <laughs> For those at home, if you didn't see that, my son took that as a joke. <laughs> So here's what happens. Oftentimes, from what I could tell, just speaking for myself too, we, we start this walk with, with Jesus. We start this relationship with him, and we're going, and it's fine, but our eyes get caught up looking at other things. We get interested in other things, and we want to bring Jesus into it, even if he says, that's not part of what I'm doing. It, uh, yesterday, we were out at the... Wildlife Preserve, the Consumers River Wildlife Preserve, I think it's called. Anyway, there's a section out there on the path where there's a boardwalk, right? And right now, it's filled with water. Uh, the rains have, have made their way down in there. And on that boardwalk, there's a bunch of sludge-looking water on the left and on the right. And we made the mistake, I guess you could call it a mistake, of not bringing the stroller for our, our youngest, Jesse. And what does he want to do? He's like, wah, wah. Wah, wah, he loves the water. He loves the water. Okay, Daniel, let me finish. <laughs> Quiet up front. <laughs> and what he does is he walks ahead of me, and he's all cute, and he's holding my hand, and everything's great. I'm like, ah, oh, I love this father-son relationship. And then he says, wah, wah, and he wants to go over there. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'm just, the next thing I know, I'm walking like this with him. No, 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 no. No, 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 why didn't we bring the stroller? And I pick him up for a second, and that's all fine until he starts to wiggle off. And I was like, oh, this is so much work. But this is fun. It's great. It's nature. 
And what he starts to do is realize, oh, he doesn't want me in the water. Why can't I just walk close to the water? And he wants to walk on the little curb section and, and, and balance. And I'm like, that's not good enough. I could probably hold your hand, but that will just teach you to walk closer and closer to the water. And what he's trying to do is find out what's the absolute furthest limits I, you'll let me go before I fall in the water, before I do what you don't want me to do. And that's just not a great interaction between and I. It's just me watching, 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 instead of him just walking down the center with me, doing a lot of fun. Whenever he did that, it was fun. He was doing somersaults, all that kind of stuff, even on a narrow path. And a lot of us, in one way or another, live that life with Jesus. We're like, God, I, I see that you're here with me right now, and everything's good. I'm holding your hand. I just want to do other things, too. And, and this comes out a lot with uh, youth and, and young adults that I've worked with in the past. It's one way or another, the question is, what is the limit? Where is the edge? How far? What, how, what's my zone of operation? Because I want to go to kind of the edge. And I'll tell you what, as soon as you want to know what is the, the limit of permissiveness of what God will allow, what he'll give me freedom to do, as soon as we're thinking about that, we've let go of his hand and we're walking outside of relationship with him. Because if you want to know what the edge is, you've passed it already. He wants to be in relationship with us, walking with us, showing us the best parts of life and the best what he can do through us. The more, the more we make a relationship with Jesus, the main thing, the more life we actually have. The more we want to know what the limits are, the more we will feel held back and frustrated with life. Romans 12.2 reads, in a paraphrase, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to know what God's will is, his perfect and pleasing will. Can we do anything about that? So what we're going to be talking about this morning is resisting and persevering. I'm not too sure where that feedback is coming from. Do I need to stand here? Is this better? For those of you at home, we're doing some feedback issues right now. <laughs> okay. Do I have to walk out there? I'll take off this microphone if I need to. Okay. That won't work. Thank you very much. On our way to carrying out God's plans for our life and what he wants to do in our life, there's going to be resistance. We're going to be mess, met with obstacles. Some of them are our own issues and hang-ups. Some of them are the difficulties in life in general. And some of them are actually a spiritual battle where the devil doesn't want us to do what God wants us to do. In fact, he doesn't want us to pay attention to him at all. And this might, uh, some of this might sound like things that you don't want to hear, but we need to understand that we live in a spiritual reality. That a lot of the issues and a lot of the hangups that we have in our life right now is because we haven't attended to and addressed the spiritual reality that we live in and the spiritual battle that we need to engage in. And we'll be tempted to, to, to pursue those edges, those borders of where God's permissiveness extends to. We'll be, per, we'll be tempted and led astray to think about what we need for ourselves more than what God wants us to do for others, for his kingdom. In James chapter 4, we read, starting at verse 7, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. 1 Peter 5, 8 reads, Stay alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, we read, 
The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus says, I have come that you may, may have life and have it to the full. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 11, 14 reads, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. You see, the devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he does. And he's a roaring, like a roaring lion, lion looking for someone to devour. But he doesn't come across as dangerous or threatening. He does his best brilliantly to masquerade as an angel of light. In that passage where we read that he masquerades as an angel of light, Paul is talking about many different teachers and apostles and philosophies that have gone out appearing to be righteous, appearing to be about God. We need to understand that we have to be aware of the spirit, spiritual fight and the spiritual battle all around us. We need to understand that some of our distractions, some of our hangups, have a spiritual battle component to it. The devil is seeking someone he can devour, kill, steal, and plunder. You ever seen those uh, animal programs where you see that, uh, that lion just about to pounce or prowl, and it's this unsuspecting, sometimes unsuspecting, little fawn or gazelle, and, you, and you're rooting for the gazelle to be able to run away. Or some of you are probably thinking, no, I'm rooting for the lion, I want to see this. <laughs> but it's usually when that gazelle or that uh, antelope is isolated or injured or hurt or one way or another, the devil prowl, pr prowls around seeing who might be hurting, who might be in pain, who might be disturbed, full of fear, and isolated from the community of God, and then appear as an angel of light to that weakened person. Many of us can be derailed when we hear, see, and do or what is done to us that is hurtful or harmful. When we, and when we respond outside of the surrender and trust and faith that we have in our relationship with God, when we respond outside of that, outside of those boundaries, when we respond to what is threatening and fearful with increased fear and more fear, that makes us look like that gazelle or that antelope, and Satan's after us. When we read about what Jesus did uh, with, with Satan when he was when he was tempting him, we see that we, we see that Satan wants to try to trick us with God's actual word. Right? Let me see if I can collect my my, my thoughts on that. When we are hungry and thirsty, like Jesus was in the wilderness when he was being tempted, we are in a place of being more susceptible to doing what we said we wouldn't do. When we are angry, it's like we're out of control. If we, and when we are hungry, we get hangry, right? We, do, we act in ways that we don't normally act, and it's that prime position to hear a voice to see an image, to, to remember something that will make that situation even worse. But what does Jesus do? When he's told to tell the stone to turn into bread so that he wouldn't be hungry anymore, he used the word of God. He said man doesn't live on bread alone, but on every word of God. When he was told that, when he, his identity was attacked and he was told, if you're really the son of God, you could jump off of this, this high building here and, the, and nothing will happen to you because the word of God says the angels will attend to you. Jesus said, hey, the word of God also says don't test the Lord your God. He affirmed who he was by the word of God. He affirmed his purpose as well, why he was doing what he was doing. And then finally, uh, Satan led him to a place where he could see all of the cities, all of the world basically, and said, look, all you got to do is worship me. You could have all of this. I can give all this to you. 
I can give you power. The world, the world is in the realm of the jurisdiction of the enemy, except for where the kingdom of God is. And Jesus says, nope. The, Bible, the word of God says, worship the Lord your God only. So here's what we could understand. In our weakness, in our times of hurt and pain and trauma, tragic, whatever might have happened in, into our lives, there's an opportunity to either be strengthened or be even more weakened. And we need to fight a spiritual battle against that. Ephesians chapter 6, let's read through that. For our, starting in verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm, then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Some of this, I, I, as I'm speaking here, some of this I, I wonder if you're hearing and thinking, it's not doing anything for me. <laughs> I, I, this is, I want to hear some motivation, some more motivational um, scripture and speak. Here's the motivation in all of this. If, if that is what's needed. Is that if we understand that we're living in a spiritual reality where we do have an enemy who is the devil a, a, attacking us, looking to see how we can be attacked, we can understand that part of what's going on in our life is not a big part of what's going on in our lives, is actually a spiritual battle. And if we understand that, we know that, we could also understand this, that at the name of Jesus, we win. That we, we, we read from James that when we resist the devil, he flees from us. When we use the word of God, the, animal, the, the enemy can't De defeat that. When we understand who we are, we stay on the right track. We don't get derailed. When we understand what our purpose is, like Jesus demonstrated, we keep moving forward, even in the midst of difficulty and resistance against us. When we understand that what's coming out, coming at us, can be met with the Word of God, the truth of who we are, and the truth of who Jesus is, then we have victory in our lives. But when we only try to just endure and manage what's going on in our lives to the best of our own natural ability, and then when we respond to what is difficult and what is anger-producing in the world with greater anger, then worse things happen in our lives. The devil sees that. Our response to what's going on in our lives, even things that weren't our fault, he sees that as an opportunity to pounce like a roaring lion. In Matthew chapter 12, I want to talk, there's so many different areas of spiritual battles, spiritual warfare we could talk about, but that's not the main essence of this message. It's just pointing out that we have a spiritual battle, we need to understand it. And I'm going to speak about a detail or a component of that, and that's the words that we use, the words of life, the words spoken to us, from us. In Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 through 37, we read, But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. You ever read that verse? Or maybe you have and you just went right by it. Like, I don't know what that means. That sounds like a big deal. Everyone will have to give an account on that day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. Now, understand this really clearly. On the day of judgment, if you have asked Jesus into your heart, you believe in him, what, Jesus, what God sees is the life of Jesus, his perfect life, his righteousness imputed to us and that we have lived out. But we have to give an account 
otherwise of every word we have spoken. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus also says, and you're, when you get angry and you tell somebody raka, that's a word of contempt, man, you're in trouble. You're in trouble with the spiritual courts. You, you didn't do right. Now, if you go further on and you call somebody a fool, you say you're a fool, Jesus says you're in danger of the fires of hell. That seems rough, but it's true if he said it. You see, our words have power and they have meaning. We read in, in Romans that if you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will be saved. See, it's not just something in our relationship with Jesus. It's not just one thing to have thoughts in your head or believe in your head. You also must be vocal with it at times or many times. Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 25. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. We are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work doing something useful with his own hands that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who, who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Day of redemption versus day of judgment. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Words matter. Now, this is, this is where it might be a little convicting. Since, since uh, COVID hit, and let me just preface this a little bit. The point of this message, the point of you hearing this I, that I hope for you is to be set free from anything that might be holding you back from looking at 2021 with an incredible outlook. Great leaders, great pe people who have done great things in this world are those who have responded to adversity in great ways. There are many people in this world, in our community, all around you, if you just open up some ki any kind of social media, who have responded to adversity and difficulty and, and troubling things that they see in poor ways. And, uh, and so doing have created a, a, a greater disturbance. But now, when we read about how our words matter and how our responses matter, we need to look at what has happened since COVID hit. What has happened since COVID hit? What have we done with our words? Where has our heart gone? Where has our mind gone? For those of you at home, <laughs> my son is walking all over the place and I'm distracted and it's an incredible illustration of, of the message that I'm actually trying to speak here. But I'm staying focused. Daniel, stay there, stay there. <laughs> But how have we responded to COVID? This is what I've heard, and this is what's happened even in me. I say even in me as if I'm above anybody. We have said things about other people that God has not been okay with. We have spoken incredibly negative things about other people, about other groups of people. And we have heard them say incredibly negative things about people that you might more associate with. James, in James we read in chapter 3 that out of the same mouth we speak cursing and praise to God. He says that that shouldn't be. That's like saying from a spring salt water could come too, or, or salt water and fresh water can come. That's like saying from a fig tree olives and, and figs and anything else could come. He says that's not true. One, one spring will produce one type of water and one tree will produce a certain type of, of fruit. And so we can't speak both curses and blessings out of the same mouth. We are called to speak blessing 
over people. We are called to speak blessing over our lives. You and I have had many people speak negative things over us. And if we let that sit in and let that permeate us, once again, the enemy is a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. It gives a foothold for him. And we could speak that off right now. We are called to speak blessing over our spouses, over our friends, over our kids, over our neighbors. Yes, over our government. But what happens instead? We get angry about things. And do you know that in your anger, you're crazy? <laughs> you and I, the, the more angry we are, the crazier we get. How many times have you said something? In fact, anybody in here ever said something that you still wish you hadn't said? Maybe 20 years ago, 10 years ago? But when we respond with blessing, when we, we hold on to our words and we don't we resist the devil's temptation to do something different with our words, for the next 20 years, for the next lifetime, it will produce blessing, even after your, your, your lifetime. Consider how your interactions have been with other people lately. I've been doing a, God's been doing a work in me and considering how I interact with my family, both uh, nuclear, extended, everybody. And I think, man, Lord, you're, you're patient and you're good, you're gracious. For every, in our frustration, in our tiredness with our kids, in that moment of just like, ah, oh, that's a moment right there to stand our ground as the same way Jesus after 40 days and 40 nights of not eating or, or, or drinking anything, having incredible needs, still said, I am going to hold on to who I am. I'm going to still hold on to my purpose. I'm still going to worship God. In the same way when you're in conflict with kids, with spouses, with friends, in, in conflict and agitated by what's happening in our world around us, respond as God would have you respond. Pray for them. Pray for those who curse you. Pray for those who are not doing what you believe God wants them to do. Pray for them. There's a spiritual battle happening. When somebody is angry at you, especially somebody who loves you, that you once thought loved you, is close to you, and they just come at you angry and disturbed and, and bringing up things that happened a long time ago, you could give in to the temptation to strike back, or you could say, Lord, there's a spiritual battle happening right now. I pray for them right now. I intercede for them right now. Take away whatever is on them right now. Take away whatever the enemy is trying to do with them right now. Intercede for them and bring blessing. Many of us are still dealing with words like failure, rejection, incredible painful experiences. And that language has to stop, doesn't it? It's time to maybe start to speak out loud for yourself, to yourself, or hear it from somebody else. Life, not failure, but acceptance. With God, there is only acceptance. There is only life. You see, God, with, with God, there is never death. There's never cursing. There's never, that is actually the same way that, uh, that coldness is the absence of heat and darkness is the absence of light. Death and cursing is simply the absence of God's words. That's it. But the same way when, when God spoke, spoke, and the universe came into existence, spoke, and you were a reality, in the same way we could speak the words of God and bring life back into our life. And that might be difficult. Some of us have had a path in our lives, a path where many people spoke negative things. Many negative things have happened into, in our lives and there's reasons for our habits and our hang-ups right now. And there's reasons why you look at 2021 with pessimism. And there's reasons why you and I would go, I, I just want to just live the best I can and not even branch out. I'm not going to risk anything. I, I, I'm, I'm just not going to change. I, I don't know how to change. There's a reason why you feel like that. And it's sound. But you also, you and I also have reason to break out of that. Because of the cross, 
at the cross, all of that failure, all of that hurt, all of that rejection was defeated because God has spoken a better word, a word of life into us. You and I, all of us in here who have received Jesus Christ as our Lord, are sons and daughters of God, accepted, fully accepted, with victory marking our lives, with possibility and ability marking our lives. And if you think you don't have any skills or abilities, that's okay. The Holy Spirit has supernaturally gifted us with abilities with which to live. As long as we stop comparing ourselves to anybody else and living into this identity that we have in Christ that is uniquely ours and connected to everybody else. It's time for some of us in here, if not all of us, to finally say, Jesus, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I give you everything. Everything I've been holding back from everybody else. I give you all of my fears. I give you all of my failures. I give you all of my hang-ups. Every time somebody has rejected me, I give you that as well. Every time I've been afraid, I give you that. All of it. I give it to you. Speak your words into my life. And endure and persevere. And when we, when we slip up, when we mess up, we keep on going, amen? We persevere. Because perseverance, according to Romans chapter 5, perseverance produces character, being more like Jesus. And character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, we read, because God has poured his love into us through the Holy Spirit. But hope can re re be replaced with disappointment. When instead of persevering, we get discouraged, defeated, and react with some harsh words for others and for ourselves. Stop talking bad about yourself. Stop talking bad about others. We're going to play a video here. Can we get that queued up and ready? And um, as we read this, as we watch this video, see where, it, I, I think it's a motivational, encouraging video no matter what, but see where you might be in, in relating to it. Okay, let's go ahead and roll that. Like, so, Coach, how strong is Westview this year? A lot stronger than we are. You already written Friday night down as a loss, Brock? Well, not if I know we could beat them. Come here, Brock. You too, Jeremy. What, am I in trouble now? Not yet. I want to see you do the death crawl again, except I want to see your absolute best. <laughs> <laughs> what, you want me to go to the 30? I think you can go to the 50. The 50? I can go to the 50 if nobody's on my back. I think you can do it with Jeremy on your back. But even if you can, I want you to promise me you're going to do your best. All right. Your best. OK. You going to give me your best? I'm going to give you my best. All right, one more thing. I want you to do it blindfolded. Why? Because I want you giving up at a certain point when you can go further. Get down. Jeremy, get on his back. <laughs> I get a good tight hold, Jeremy. All right, let's go, Brock. Keep your knees off the ground, just your hands and feet. There you go. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go. Show me good effort. That way, Brock. You keep coming. There you go. It's a good start. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go, Brock. Good strength. <laughs> That's it, Brock. That's it. Not the 20 yet. Forget the 20. You give me your best. You keep going. That's it. No, don't stop, Brock. You got more in you than that. Hey, done. Just rest in a second. You gotta keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's go. Don't quit till you got nothing left. There you go. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving it. Your very best. Your very best. Your very best. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. Don't quit on me. Keep going. Keep driving it. Keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. That's it. Your very best. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving it. Don't quit till you got nothing left. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. I want everything you got. 
Come on, keep going. It hurts. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. He's heavy. I know I'm, he's heavy. I'm bad out of strength. Then you negotiate with your body to find more strength, but don't you give up on me, Brock. You keep going, you hear me? You keep going. You're doing good. You keep going. Do not quit on me. You keep going. It hurts. I know it hurts. You keep going. You keep going. It's all hard from here. 30 more steps. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Keep going. Burn. And let it burn. Ours are burning. It's all hard. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Come on. Keep going. You promised me your best. You're back! Don't stop! Keep going! Too hard! It's not too hard! You keep going! Come on, Brock! Give me more! Give me more! Keep going! 20 more steps! 20 more! Keep going, Brock! Give me your best! Don't quit! No! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Don't quit! Don't quit! Don't quit! Brock Kelly, you don't quit! Keep going! Keep going! Go, Brock Kelly! You don't quit on me! No! You keep going! You keep going! Go, Brock! Ten more steps! Ten more! Ten more! Ten more! Keep going! Don't quit! Give me your heart! You can! You can! Five more! Five more! Come on, Brock! Come on! Don't quit! Don't quit! Come on, Brock! Two more! One more! I've got to do 50. I've got to do 50. I'll have any more. Look up, Brock. You're in the end zone. Brock, you are the most influential player on this team. If you walk around defeated, so will they. Oh, tell me you can't give me more than what I've been seeing. You just carried a 140-pound man across this whole field on your arms. Brock, I need you. God's gifted you with the ability of leadership. Don't waste it. Coach? Can I count on you? Yes. Coach? What is it, Jeremy? I want a 160. Don't quit, don't stop. Don't quit, don't stop. Great people respond to hard things in great ways. And for some of us, it's been hard for a long time, I understand that. For some of us, you're tired and just worn out from what you see and what you hear around the world and maybe what's happening in your home, what's happening in your life. You're, for some of us, we're tired of feeling discouraged. We're tired of just barely making it through. Some of us are tired of the relational difficulties we're having. But right here, right now, we're going to make a decision that we're not going to be leaving ourselves vulnerable for the roaring lion, the enemy, to pounce and attack us. We're not going to listen to those lies anymore. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus has said, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Do you want that? Do you want that for 2021? It's time to let go of everything that we have let capture our attention and our priorities ahead of God. Repent. It's time to replace that. Live life new with faith in him, living for him, growing in him. It's time to revive and refresh all that we've ever known and make changes in our lives and commit to trusting Jesus. And it's time to resist the devil's temptations, resist his lies, and fight a spiritual battle. Because in that, in the name of Jesus, we win every single time. Every single time. Pray with me right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now. And we give you our lives. We give you the year ahead of us. We want to walk into the purposes and the plans that you have for us. 
set us free, Lord God. We ask that you would give us your words and impute in us your words and your understanding and just the reality of who you are, that we would use that truth against the enemy. We proclaim your goodness right now. We proclaim your victory, your truth, and your life over us right now. We tell defeat to go. We tell failure to go. We reject failure. We re reject rejection. We reject discouragement right now in Jesus' name. We hold on to the hope that you have given us, Lord, not just for this world, but for life eternal with you. We want to walk into who we are with you. And with eyes closed and heads bowed still, if you need to receive Jesus for the first time, pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins. I believe that on the cross you have defeated sin and you wash me clean. By faith, I receive your forgiveness on the cross and I decide here and now to follow you all of my days with your help and by your grace. If that's been your prayer with eyes still closed, can you raise your hand that I could pray for you? Amen. Amen. And there's another prayer. If you need to be set free from whatever foothold might be on you that was caused by anger, words spoken and received, pray with me right now. I release myself from every foothold of anger, despair, discouragement, and fear in the name of Jesus. And I cancel every plan from the enemy against me in the name of Jesus. I stand with Jesus and I live for Jesus and I proclaim that right now in Jesus' name. If that's been your prayer or your need, will you also raise your hand? Amen. Amen. Yes. All around. Yes. For all these requests, Lord, we lift them up to you and our hope remains in you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for coming, everybody. Go in God's grace and peace. And if anybody needs additional prayer, you want to talk about anything, come to me up front.